We are here with Laura, our teacher in this, and our conductor in this research experiment. So, do you feel quite alone in the world doing this kind of research about eye tracking, or you are not so alone? You know, that's a good question. I, I don't feel alone in that. I think there's a lot of interest in it, and there's a lot of people, and it's exciting here today that there's this group of students that are so interested in learning it, but there aren't a lot of people doing it. Um, and so, in that way, it's kind of exciting, and I am, I do feel like a pioneer, but I'm also very excited about sharing the knowledge with the large group of people who are interested in learning how to do eye tracking work. Uh, what do you think that is the future of eye tracking? Uh, is that uh, other uh, enterprises make this technology or make similar technologies and spread this knowledge in research abroad the world? Or uh, is something like this uh, maybe Toby in this case and uh, your research team is uh, using this technology to uh, or ranging this technology or uh, spreading this technology along the, uh, the world or sharing it with other research teams? Well, Toby is definitely one of the leaders in terms of making the technology. There are other companies as well. Um, I think the future of this research really is going to be how we can utilize this technology with um, uh, other devices other than computers, such as handheld devices or things like that. And so uh, I only see growth in this area, understanding and using technology to know what we can look at. And as I mentioned, again, coupling that with usability research and media effects research is going to give us really valuable okay. Just about to, to get a little bit more uh, closer to your team. Uh, your team, we understand that is quite interdisciplinary because you are dealing with technology, but at the end uh, maybe there are some topics related to psychology, to uh, also uh, like physical skills, like uh, your whatever. So, uh, which kind of people work with you? Well, I'm, my, my research area and my interest is more in people who are in the communications area. So we're more, very much interested in very practical uh, design and user de usability decisions for web design. And uh, But certainly there is a lot of eye tracking work going on in the area, as you mentioned, the psychology, as well as uh, you know other you know, uh, uh, education in terms of reading habits and that type of thing. So my area is more in the area of communication and journalism, but there's people in certainly other areas, like I said, of, of web interface and of psychology and education that also are doing eye tracking. Right. And finally, can you just give us a, a couple of tips or maybe examples of websites that you have improved with, uh, with your research team? Uh, well, a couple of tips. One of the things we always notice hands down over and over again with web content is that if there is a picture of an individual's face, a tight image of a face, it generates eye fixations. Usually that's the type of image the most that we see will generate eye fixations as a general rule. Of course, there's exceptions to that. Um, some of the other things we found is that um, when, you, when we ask users to look for navigation on a web page, intuitively we see eye movements go to the top of the web page. It doesn't mean you can't throw navigation on the right or the left or the bottom, but we found that user behavior tends to be as soon as you ask somebody to look for navigation, their eyes usually move to the top of a web page. Um, we found that um, you know doing things like using icons and, and small um, uh, visual indicators of, of information will increase comprehension and, and, and but actually decrease the amount of time that's spent on our but increase comprehension of it. Um, those are just a few of the little things that we found. <laughs> Thank you very much okay. for being with us. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Isidra, co-coordinador del Master. Molt ràpida la pregunta. Com se us ha acudit o d'on ha sortit la idea o com ha vingut el contacte de portar un expert en el tema de eye tracking com la Laura? Bé, la resposta és molt fàcil. L'Òscar va assistir a una conferència on la Laura explicava part dels temes que hem vist durant la sessió d'ahir i durant la d'avui. I va agradar molt. De fet, suposo que és molt convincent. Com a mínim aquesta és la meva sensació després d'haver assistit a la sessió i ens va semblar molt, molt interessant afegir-la dintre de la docència del programa. Què diries en els dissenyadors d'interacció que treballen el tema d'usabilitat i no han sentit a parlar potser o no han tingut mai l'ocasió o el plaer de provar un sistema com l'eye tracking? 
Bé, jo em posaria en dubte com dissenya de interacció avui en dia no hagi sentit a parlar més d'una vegada i no hagi revisat més d'una vegada els resultats de Dei Frac 3 que està menjat a internet, que és molt conegut i que és a l'estament consultat i aplicat a molts temes. De manera que m'estranyaria trobar-me amb un dissenyador que no conegués una mica tot aquest magma, tot aquest corpus i totes aquestes indicacions que amb petites pautes poden aportar-nos solucions molt en la direcció del lesismo i molt en la direcció que si nosaltres treballem no en funció de certeses sinó en funció d'hipòtesis de treball que després podem testejar amb analítica o amb què és més qualitativa o bé amb aquests estudis que són més qualitatius probablement assolirem resultats millors. Molt bé, gràcies.